the second chapter of the books of the apostle, maybe more specifically after Peter's speech on the day of Pentecost, present us what many believe would be the idol community of faith. We're told that the first convert, the first disciples, were divided, devoting themselves to teaching, to fellowship, to praising God in the temple. They put all things in common and disputed it according to needs of, of the people, not according to the value of an individual or the title. And this image, this model of church has become uh, across the years, across the centuries, across the millennia, as the ultimate aim from, for every church. The problem is that 2,000 years ago, uh, 2,000 years later, sorry, uh, we're far from it. Some would say that this kind of congregation and community never existed. It's some sort of idolization of the past. Others said, yes, it might have existed, but it, it, it was a small group. It's always easier than larger church, larger community. Maybe, maybe they're right. Maybe uh, we don't live in this world anymore and it would not be possible exactly on this way. Nevertheless, this text can still teach us something, something about what I would call a culture of generosity. These days in our churches, we hear words like fundraising, like philanthropy, like stewardship. We're talking about budget, donation, endowment, and, and we're telling people that all those gifts are tax deductible especially after a few days that we all have to fill our income taxes forms. It's all great. It's all true. But generosity is something else. Something I would say different from the amount I can put on a check. Generosity is about sharing what I have, what we have, with others. It could be as simple as this. And and it's larger than money. Yes, some have financial resources and they can share. Others, they would say they, they retire, they, they, they don't have that much money. But what they have is time, which is a very important currency, very rare currency in this day and time. Others have gifted they're gifted in arts music uh, others can listen with compassion and and they will have this special attention they will give to people we all have gifts we all have something to share and when we care a little less about self and what I have and a little more about others and what I can bring them, well, we are creating a better world for all. I might say, you might say, and I might hear you that, yeah, that's all of this is very beautiful, but we still live in a capitalist system. And, and I know that. I've read statistics like you, like the three richest people in the world own more than the economy of 48 countries together. The poorest 20% own about 1.5% of the resource of the world, when, while the richest 1% own more than 40%. And there's billions of human beings right now that are living daily on less than what it costs to buy a coffee at Starbucks. And you might say, how being generous with the little I have can change this, can change the world. Well, it might not change the world and bring a huge revolu revolution, but it can change ourselves. By 
adopting this radical idea of generosity, we're attacking um, the distinction, the borders we put between people. It's attacking this, this construction we make when we talk about me and you or, or them and going to talk about we. You probably notice this when someone is struggling, when someone is sick. Well, a family, a community will rally together to help that person. And because somehow they feel close to their person, there's some sense of connection, some sense of intimacy. And with the culture of generosity, we're invited to care a little less about me and start to think about we. And we could be we, the people living in the city, we, the people living in this country, we, the people living on this planet, we, the pe all of the living being of God's creation. And then we change our view of life. We, we change how we uh, interact with people. And it's, once again, focusing a little less on what I have and looking at what we have if we put everything we have together. It's a little more that what I can do for me and starting to think about what can be done by all of us together. And that's how we can discover that how a group, a community, God's creation can benefit from putting our gifts together by sharing, by being generous. And like I said, it can happen on a very small scale in our family, at home, at school, at work. Or it could be larger scale with a project that we all join together in a country or internationally. But it does not matter if it's a small scale or a large scale. It's how we are transformed by this project and how we can become agent of transformation around us. A culture of generosity. Follow us everywhere we go and everything we do. And it's answering God's call to care for one another. So that's all for today. Thank you once again for watching. I remain the electionary man, Stéphane Vermette. And until next time, take care of yourself. Bye-bye.